Are you looking for pelvic floor strengthening exercises? Maybe you're a woman postpartum and your pelvic floor just isn't what it used to be. Maybe you're a man and you're struggling with ejaculatory control. Or maybe you're a man or a woman and you're struggling with incontinence. You're having trouble controlling your urine or your bowels. Maybe you're even having prolapse. If so, this video is for you. Hey, my name is Lucas. I'm a yoga teacher. I'm a teacher trainer. In the yoga tradition, we have a practice called Mula Bunda or Root Lock, which refers directly to this pelvic floor strength coordination practice. And it dates back hundreds, maybe even thousands of years. In this video, I'll share with you, number one, the anatomy of the pelvic floor, which muscles are involved. Number two, we'll talk about dysfunction, why things go wrong. And lastly, probably most importantly, we'll look at some exercises you can do at home to strengthen, coordinate, and bring awareness back to your pelvic floor. Quick disclaimer here, I'm a yoga teacher, not a medical doctor. If you have a major pelvic floor dysfunction, please check with a healthcare provider before you do anything. Let's start off by talking about the anatomy. Your pelvic floor, if you look at the base of your pelvis, you can see there's a big hole there. There's nothing there. So what supports my pelvic floor? There's a group of muscles called your levator ani muscles. And there's three primary muscles on the pelvic floor. You probably notice if you've looked at a spine before that there is our coccyx, our tailbone. And you probably thought, that's pretty silly. Haven't we evolved away from having tails? And the answer is yes. We don't really need a tail, but our tailbone, our coccyx, plays a very important role as an attachment site for the muscles of your pelvic floor. These three muscles we can look at uh, separately. And the first one is called your pubo rectalis. Pubo refers to your pubis bone, your pubis bone here, and rectalis refers to your rectum. So the muscle starts at your pubis and it wraps around your rectum. This one of the three muscles controls your anal sphincter. The next muscle that we'll look at is your pubo coccygeal muscle, going from your pubis to your coccyx, your tailbone. This is the larger and the more powerful of these three muscles. And then the last one we'll look at is your iliococcygeal muscle, and that goes from your ischial crest to your coccyx. Why is it called your iliococcygeal instead of your ischial coccygeal? It's just poorly named. Sometimes anatomists confuse us. The reality is all these terms are less important than the concept of levator ani, muscular diaphragm, muscular net, the webbing, three muscles right at the base of your pelvis. And what do they do? They control your urine, your ejaculation. They control your bowels. If you're a woman, it supports your uterus. It also affects your posture. Really, really important. The reason these muscles are so important is because if when you laugh, you pee yourself, that can really disrupt your quality of life. Okay, so now we know what these muscles are. Why do they get weak? Why do they get flaccid? Why do they have problems? The number one cause, of course, is childbirth. During childbirth, these muscles can get strained. They can even get torn and very, very damaged. The second most common reason is simply with age and atrophy. I think it's helpful to think about someone who's older who might have like a flabby underarm. Their muscles have atrophied and they're no longer in use. When it's your underarm, that's really just aesthetic. But when it's your pelvic floor and you're unable to control your bowels or you're peeing yourself, that's really a big, big impact. And so childbirth, age and atrophy and lack of use from sitting in a car, sitting in a chair all day can all lead to a really weak pelvic floor. Okay, so what do we do about it? I'll show you some exercises, but before we do the exercises, we need to first learn how to feel to engage those muscles. What I mean by that is if I told you, hey, contract your bicep muscle, almost all of you would be able to do that. But if I said, hey, can you contract your pubo rectalis muscle, you'd go, what? You don't know how to do that, right? And so I'll walk you through some eyes closed exercises to feel this. One thing to remember is that our pelvic floor diaphragm and our breathing diaphragm, they work together and they really have a paradoxical relationship. What that means is when my breathing diaphragm is relaxed on an exhale, that's when it's in a dome shape, that's when I can squeeze here much better, my pelvic floor. Because when I breathe in, my diaphragm contracts and all my guts, everything gets pushed down and it's much more difficult to squeeze my pelvic floor. For this reason, both now and in our exercises, we'll work at the bottom of the exhale. At the bottom of the exhale, your breathing diaphragm is relaxed up, there's more space and it's 
easier to squeeze the base of that flower pot. Sitting in a chair or sitting on the floor, wherever you are, place your hands on top of your legs, relax your shoulders, close your eyes. I'd like you to imagine for a moment that you're sitting on the toilet, sorry for the visualization, it's the only way to do it, and you're urinating and I need you to stop the flow of urine. We'll do it at the bottom of the exhale. I'll close my fist so that you know you're meant to squeeze and I'll count up to the count of five. Let's inhale gently through our nose, exhale gently through our nose, all the way out. Now squeeze, stop the flow of urine for one, two, three, four, Five, release, relax, and breathe normally. Some of you were able to hold those muscles throughout the practice. Many of you, your muscle contract release, it kind of pulsed, totally normal, don't worry. It takes some time to coordinate these muscles. That was exercise one. Exercise two, I'd like you to imagine that you're defecating. Again, sorry for the visualization, it's the only way to do it. And you need to stop the flow, you need to squeeze your anus. Let's inhale. Exhale everything out. Squeeze, hold, one, two, three, four, five. Relax, release, and breathe normally. Again, it might have pulsed, pulsed, pulsed. That's okay, maybe it pulsed and held, also okay. So now we contracted our urethra, where the pee comes out. We contracted our anus, defecation. Right in between, there's a third area that we can contract. For men, if you visualize like lifting your testicles, for women, if you visualize like contracting your vaginal opening, that can usually help you to access that area. So again, front, back, now we'll contract in the middle. Let's practice together. Inhale, exhale everything out. Good, lift that middle area, hold. One, two, three, four, five, relax, release, and breathe normally. Now that we've isolated these three areas, some people, some pelvic floor therapists will work on these areas individually. There's really great benefit to that and sometimes that subtle practice can be really helpful. For the sake of our practice, we'll grab all three areas at the same time. Front, so your urethra, back, your anus, and then right in the middle will lift everything. If you imagine like a webbing or a net, I'd like you to lift and squeeze. Let's practice all three areas together now. Let's inhale, exhale everything out. Good, contract and squeeze everything. One, two, three, four, five. Relax, release, and breathe normally. Already, we're starting to bring awareness to this area. Already, we're starting to develop coordination of these muscles, and this is really important. Next, I'd like to show you some formal strengthening exercises you can do with one big caveat. It's not as easy to strengthen our pelvic floor muscles as it might be to strengthen our biceps. What I mean by that is if you decided you want bigger, stronger biceps, you'd put a weight in your hand and with resistance, you could create muscle hypertrophy and strength very, very quickly. Since we can't really do weightlifting with our pelvic floor, what we're really trying to do with these exercises is we're trying to bring awareness and coordination there so that our pelvic floor starts to fire and engage naturally throughout our day. When we get up and down from the ground, when we get up and down from the toilet, when we're using the toilet, when we're moving around in our daily life, instead of our pelvic floor being flaccid and loose, it'll start to contract and naturally support our spine, our bladder, our, our anus, and all of the organs of your pelvic floor as well. Let's get into the exercises. For this first exercise, we'll sit in a chair. We just need a towel. Roll up your towel into a tube like this, and then we'll sit on it lengthwise. So it's going quite literally touching your perineum, the, the base of your spine. When you sit on this, what it allows you to do is get more awareness to those levator ani muscles, because you can feel them pressing against the actual towel. That helps you with that proprioception, just understanding what's going on. Here's what we'll do. Just like we did before, we'll engage both one, two, and three muscles all at the same time. So imagine stopping the flow of urine, stopping defecation, and then the muscle in the middle as well. So we lift all at once. Remember, we'll do it at the bottom of the exhale. I'll make a fist to show that you should squeeze, and I'll count to five. Let's practice together. Inhale. Exhale everything out. Good. Lift everything and squeeze. One two, three, four, 
Five, relax, release, and breathe normally. Could you do this without the towel? Sure, you could, but it helps. You probably already felt that there's greater proprioception awareness down there. Let's practice again. We'll do three sets in total. Inhale. Exhale everything out. Good. Contract and squeeze. One, two, three, four, five. Relax, release, and breathe normally. We're trying to bring awareness to this area. We're trying to increase coordination, increase strength, and hopefully that'll play out in the rest of our life as we're moving through our day. Let's do one more set here. Inhale. Exhale everything out. Good. And squeeze and hold. One, two, three, four, five. Relax, release, and breathe normally. Remember, don't overdo it with these practices. A few sets, a few times a day, and that's it. Otherwise, you can cause constipation. You can get a little bit anxious. That's not what we're looking for. For the second exercise, we'll move down to the floor. The final exercise we'll do is lying down. I've specifically shown you a seated practice and a lying down practice because your assignment is three rounds, three times per day. So you can do two of them in a chair and probably this one you'll do right before bed at night. It's up to you how you mix and match, but the idea is you could do it in a chair, you could do it lying down, the exercise is the same. Now I'm using a yoga block between my knees here, but if you're in bed, you can simply use a pillow, but it is helpful if you can squeeze something. Do you have to squeeze something? No, but by proxy, it helps you to get that contraction running down to your pelvic floor. It's just a little trick. Lie down on your back, feet about as wide as your hips, place the block or your pillow between your knees, and relax. Don't do anything with your core. Don't flatten your back. Just let your back do whatever it would naturally do on your bed or on the floor. I want to remind you about those three areas we looked at before. Stopping urination, stopping defecation, and then right in the middle, we'll lift all three. Your pelvis might shift just a little bit when you press into the block and when you lift your pelvic floor. That's okay. But I don't want your glutes to fire and I don't want you to be contracted in your core. Instead, try to move deep, deep, deep into that pelvic floor diaphragm. Let's practice together. Inhale. Exhale everything out. Squeeze the block. Lift your pelvic floor. One, two, three, four, five. Relax, release, and breathe normally. When we squeeze the block, your adductors on your groin, they'll contract. Those are not your pelvic floor muscles, obviously, but it can help you sometimes by proxy to bring awareness to your pelvic floor. Let's do another round. Inhale. Exhale. Squeeze the block. Squeeze your pelvic floor. One, two, three, four, five. Relax, release, and breathe normally. We'll do one more round. Inhale. Exhale. Squeeze the block. Squeeze your pelvic floor. One, two, three, four, five. Relax, release and breathe normally. I hope you found those exercises helpful. Remember, your assignment is three rounds, three times per day. You could do seated, seated, lying down. You could do all of them seated, all of them lying down. You choose. Remember, what we're trying to do here is increase your strength and coordination, but also just your awareness of this area. The reason this is important is because if I told you, engage, contract your biceps three times per day, you go, Lucas, I don't think that's going to make my bicep bigger or stronger. And you're right. But what it will do is bring awareness and coordination. And when we bring awareness and coordination down there, your pelvic floor diaphragm will all by itself naturally start to contract when you squat, when you tie your shoes, when you get up and down from the floor, when you get up and down from a chair. And that's what we're looking for. Pelvic floor tone. If you'd like more science-based yoga videos, hit subscribe down below. If you have questions about this video or anything we've covered, please drop down in the comments below. I always like to hear from you. You can find my teaching schedule online at yogabody.com and there's a full PDF of all the practices we just did down below as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.